Welcome to Admissions and 15 Adventures. Then, as the reality of what lay before them sunk in, a seriousness and urgency began to press upon them. These were no ordinary passengers. They were flying down to Mexico to do battle with one another. They knew that once the plane took off, there was no turning back. It was time for the battle of the network stars. We're on a mission. We've, we've, come, we've come 500 million light, light years away, and we are now beaming into Mexico. Before they crossed into Mexico, a desperate cry from a passenger forced the plane to return to Los Angeles. Luckily, he found it before the plane had to land. Once again, the plane headed back toward Extapa. couldn't believe he was carrying network stars, so he detoured to Mexico City for a quick look who I'm with to his brother-in-law. To make amends for the delay, the airline delighted everyone by showing a classic short film. Well, at least one passenger was delighted. Tapas, the Watanejo Airport was in sight. After coasting down the runway for what seemed to be forever, the plane finally arrived at its destination. Welcome to Tapa. The battle of the network stars was ready to begin, but there were some minor details to take care of first. Everybody's spirits were high in anticipation of some great competition. Let's meet the combatants. For the ABC team, Deborah Adair of Finder of Lost Loves. The first star, Mary Cataret, who plays Vicki Bradford on Three's a Crowd. Jack Coleman, who's Stephen Carrington on Dynasty. He's an all-round good athlete. And Patricia Klaus, Judy McCoy on The Love Boat, competing once again in ABC. Also from The Love Boat, ship photographer Ted McGinley, former USC water polo star. English-born Emma Sams. She's the new Fallon Colby on Dynasty. Michael Spawn, Dave Kendall on Hotel, touted as a fierce competitor. And the captain of the ABC team, the star of Who's the Boss, Tony Danza. Our stars were met at the airport by the local dignitaries. And as they stopped to celebrate their arrival, let's meet the stars of the CBS team. An accomplished actress of Broadway and films, star of her own show, Lucy Arnaz. Mary Fran, Joanna Loudon on Newhart, an avid sports enthusiast. From the ranks of cheerleader to competitor, Jenny Lee Harrison, Jamie Ewing of Dallas. Doug McKeon, who played the title role in the Ray Mancini story, Heart of a Champion. Billy Moses, Cole Gioberti on Falcon Crest, proven as an exceptional athlete. Songwriter, composer, and veteran of battle, Jennifer O'Neill of the CBS series Cover Up. Jack Rambo, voted as one of TV's top ten hunks, and another in a long line of viewings on Dallas. And the captain of the CBS team, who has a blue belt in karate, Lorenzo Lamas of Falcon Crest. Finally, let's meet the members of the NBC team. Lisa Bonet of NBC's new hit series, The Cosby Show. Erin Gray of Silver Spoons. She's not only beautiful, but competitive as well. Keel Martin, Detective J.D. LaRue on Hill Street Blues, who's never without his stuffed duck. Nancy McKeon, Joe of the Facts of Life. This is her third big battle. Patricia McPherson, Bonnie Barstow on Knight Rider. Artist and athletes. Street smart and athletic Ken Olin, Detective Harry Garibaldi on Hill Street Blues. 
Michael Thomas, the slick Ricardo Tobes of the NBC series Miami Vice, and the captain of the NBC squad from Half Nelson, Bubba Smith. And now, here is your host, Dick Van Dyke. Hi, I'm Dick Van Dyke, and this is my co-host, the beautiful star of Knott's Landing, Joe Van Ark. Well, thank you, Dick. Dutch meets Dutch, 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 huh? That's right, two Dutchmen doing the show. We have a very different kind of a battle for you this year, but for the first time, the Battle of the Network Stars is outside the boundaries of the United States of America. And what boundaries we found? That's Look right. You know, Mariachi? if the competition's as good as the uh, weather down here, we can have fun. We'll have a good time. And I've been talking to some of the team captains on the plane down here, and they're telling me they're ready, and they're out there, and they're going to go for it. Incidentally, so we're, we we're in Estapa. Estapa, Mexico, new that. events, and your best favorite stars when we come back, so stay tuned. Battle of the Network Stars is brought to you by Bud Light. The best has a taste all its own, satisfying but never filling. So ask for Bud Light. And by Dodge, a front-wheel drive revolution, a turbocharged revolution, a performance revolution. Dodge, an American revolution. It is an American revolution. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Uh, give me a light. Uh, Bud Light. Hold this, will you? So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light! Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. Strike. Came to this U-Haul center to rent a paint sprayer. I can paint the house and still go fishing. I didn't know U-Haul rented lawnmowers, tillers, cement sure. mixers. Now U-Haul centers rent almost everything for home. Floor care. Work. Plumbing. And planes. VCRs and movies. Now U-Haul even rents motorhomes, camping trailers, and boats. Perfect for my fishing trip. Honey, after you finish painting, let's go catch some big ones. Thanks, U-Haul. The oysters we make are living on look pretty tough, but they live in a very fragile world. So when Phillips Petroleum came here to look for oil, they used aerial infrared photography to keep from disturbing places we fish for oysters. That's why I buy Phillips gasoline. Not because of what they're doing in the Delta, but because of what they're not doing. That's performance. From Phillips Petroleum, you'll find performance in everything we do. We're back in sunny Mexico. This year's Battle of the Network Stars takes place 150 miles north of Acapulco, along some of Mexico's most beautiful coastline. Here to guide us on our trip are Dick Van Dyke and his co-host, Joan Van Ark. Welcome back to Estapa, Mexico, for the 18th Battle of the Network Stars. Olay! <laughs> you know, the dictionary defines a battle as a violent clash between two opposing sides. Right. Well, we have here not two, but three, three. teams, all seeking victory for their network. Big ones, as a matter of fact. And on all three teams, Dick, we have some pretty outstanding athletes. We've got Bubba Smith, who's mm. the captain of the NBC team. Bubba, Bubba, go Bubba. We have Tony Danza, who's a former boxer, and he's the captain of the ABC team. And Ooh. I happen to know that the CBS guy, Billy Moses, is a real threat. He's one of the best all-around athletes we've ever had on Battle of the Network Stars. The real key, though, lies in the women on the team. Where they go, so goes the winner, because mm -hmm. that's the important missing link. I happen to know from dinner last night that ABC, though, is out for blood. They're here to win. A lot of spirit. A lot of spirit. <laughs> <laughs> well, our celebrities will be competing in eight events, the swimming and the running relays, tennis, and a couple of new events, the Mexican fishing boat race and the beach relay. Now, unlike most of the Mexican fishing boat races, this will be done in the daytime and without the help of the Coast Guard. Look out. And then there's volleyball. Yeah. And the two Battle of the Network Stars classics, the dreaded obstacle <laughs> I course. I know about that one. I saw that. <laughs> and, of course, the most grueling event of all, the tug of war. That'll determine our winner. The winning team in each event will receive 100 points for first place, second place is 75 points, and third place will merit 50 points. 
And each member of the winning team will receive $20,000. Second place, that's the runners up $12,500. Each member of the third place team will receive $8,000. That's $324,000 in all. A lot of margaritas. <laughs> Pina coladas? Yes. Now, because they will be paid for participating in this battle of the network stars, none of these stars will be eligible for the 1988 Olympic team. I'm sorry. Well, there's no problem on that, Dick, because I saw them all working out yesterday, and I don't think Carl Lewis has anything to sweat about. <laughs> I don't either. Of course, I saw Carl Lewis act. I don't think they have anything to worry about. <laughs> sorry, Carl, joking. <laughs> but speaking of uh, sweat, it's getting a little warm it's out It's a little here. sticky. Why don't we mosey over for the first event, which is the swimming relay? Well, perfect timing. Let's do it. As I said before, the women are taking this event very seriously. I don't see any of the guys warming up. Maybe they think they're at summer camp. Dick? Okay, we're now ready for the swimming relay. Here's how the relay works. Each team has five participants. At least three of those must be women. Now, the first four swimmers will swim one length of the pool. The anchor person will swim two lengths, and each length is 25 meters. So let's take a look at the teams. First we have in uh, lane one will be the ABC team. Leading off will be Michael Spound, followed by Pat Klaus. Number three will be Mary Cadaret. Deborah Adair, number four, and anchor person will be Ted McGinley. Yep. What, what's Joe that? Ted McGinley has been docked 15 minutes for horseplay. Horseplay? Horseplay. Well, 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 he well, was running. Wait, horseplay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. David, what do you mean horseplay? Horseplay. Yeah, hey, wait a minute. I want to see the commissioner. I want the commissioner. Oh, we have uh, we have a dispute. The commissioner, Mr. Earl Weaver. Uh, oh, Earl. Commissioner, uh, we have a dispute here. Commissioner, I, I don't want to get into an argument, but uh, Ted McGinley is very important to my team, and he's swimming the English. Like... According according to the lifeguard, he was eliminated, not allowed to swim for horseplay. 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 We're supposed to be having a good time here. What are you talking about horseplay? This, this is saying... competition. This is what, uh, that's right. competition. Listen, I'm telling you something. We can right do now. it just like we did it on the field. Yeah, well, this is not baseball. Horse this is play. Horse, 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 I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You can swim. You cannot. You're out. Okay, as long as I can swim. Oh, you can swim. Thank you. Uh, folks, I, uh, from what I understand officially, that a dispute has been settled, and Mr. McGinley will be swimming anchor for the ABC team. Thank you, Commissioner. And I guess Tony Danza <laughs> is out. Oh, well, that was a rough beginning for Commissioner Weaver, but Earl is no stranger to conflict. On the way to winning four American League pennants and one world championship, Earl compiled the second highest winning percentage in baseball history. And when he wasn't terrorizing umpires, his players were terrorizing opposing teams. As the commissioner of Battle of the Network Stars, Earl puts the spike on the other foot. His is the final word. Now, here are the lineups for the swimming relay. Uh, as you can see, Ted McGinley is indeed swimming anchor for the ABC team. NBC will start the race with three women up front. Erin Gray, Lisa Bonet, and Patricia McPherson. Interesting strategic move there. The key for CBS will be to keep it close for anchorman Billy Moses. Billy is an exceptional swimmer, and if it comes down to that last leg, they just might make it. And now, Dick, we're ready for the start of the race. In lane one, Michael's found for ABC. In lane two, Aaron Gray for NBC. And in lane three, CBS and Dak Rambo. There they go. All right, ABC's found gains a slight lead over CBS's Rambo. NBC's Aaron Gray holds her own. Been close there. We come to the end, it's Spound touching first, Rambo second, and Pat Klaus in lane one for ABC, Lucy Arnaz in the far lane for CBS, and Lisa Bonet in the middle lane for NBC. Lucy Arnaz swimming smoothly and takes over the lead. Lisa Bonet is in a close third. Here comes Mary Fran for nice CBS. Nice dive for Mary mm -hmm. Fran. Mary Cataret for ABC, Patricia McPherson for NBC. There's Mary Fran doing a little water ballet. Uh -oh. Very nice. Very, very pretty there. Esther Williams ought to check in on this. Some nice moves. Cataret is in the lead. McPherson's moving into second. Now, Deborah Adair really has a chance to build that lead. But wait a minute. Here comes Keel Martin. <laughs> Too bad CBS doesn't have flippers still on the air. And Mary's doing some nice flips right there. Keel Martin takes the lead. And Mary Fran touches Jenny Lee Harrison into the pool. There she goes. It looks like NBC's strategy of swimming the three women first is starting to pay off. Olin and NBC with a big lead. ABC's McGinley. Great stroke. Billy Moses is a dynamite swimmer in the distant third. Not even in the picture here. And McGinley catches Olin on the turn. He's away. 
caught on the ropes there. Moses a distant, distant third. McGinley is pulling away. Not even a race. There goes. Going to be ABC, ABC first. And that's NBC coming in second. And it'll be CBS third. And there goes Billy Moses. Great athlete, but not this time, not this race. And the ABC team celebrates their victory in the first event, and Dick is with the winners. Thank you. It was a good team effort. That's right. You were behind her for a while. Hey, Michael, I'm sorry. You were behind her for a while. I was behind for a little bit, but... No, I mean the team was. Who, who picked that up the lead? Oh, I'd say... No, it was a combined effort. I thought that uh, Deborah did a great job hanging in there. I thought we... The girls... The girls are what won that one for us. And Michael. But I consider... I consider him one of the girls. So. Congratulations. Thank you very much, man. Alan Breeze. <laughs> We tried. Yeah. We pulled it off, but we tried. But when we had someone swimming who doesn't even swim today, she didn't drown. That Mary didn't drown. My God, Mary Frank, you're all alive. Tell me about the stroke. What was this fall that you were doing? Yes, this was a, a special technique that I, I have uh, mastered now. Can we look for this in the 88 Olympics, this, this stroke? Oh, absolutely. I'll be coaching people. You will be. Oh, I'll Anyone be Well, you can see. Oh, listen, you're a natural. You can, I'm, I'm a natural? Yes. Now, I want to know, what is your special training food? What, what, did, what did you use? I have uh, 13 tacos before the race. Yeah. And then I have a couple of burritos during the race. During, that's why you were slower. That's it. Anything to wash that down with? <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, lots of water. Water. Lots she of water. Lots of water. Well, you heard it right here. Full side with problem. Barry Friend from the CBS team. <laughs> So, after one event, the score stands ABC 100, NBC 75, and CBS 50. Coming up, the running relay. You're not always neat and tidy. Uh, how perfect can you be? Someone no one can copy You sure look good to me Don't ever change a thing After all that we've been through You're just like me Big Mac There's no one quite like you Big Mac It's a good time For the great taste Of McDonald's You've got nerve to insult my wife we just told Ann Caltabiano if she's got cotton, she could do better for her family wash. My fabric softener does do a wonderful job on this shirt, on all of the shirts, on all of our clothes. Compare these all-cotton shirts, one done in your fabric softener, the other in Final Touch fabric softener. Which is better? These shirts are soft, but this one, wow, that thing is white. That's a lot whiter. Yeah, really? That's what I call a white. White shirt. Oh, wow. <laughs> final Touch. And the Final Touch for a soft, whiter wash. After eight years, I'm going to switch to Final Touch. Possibly have happened, but it did. Be with us for part one of Deadly Intentions, Sunday night at 7.30. We're back in Extapa, Mexico, for the second event of the Battle of the Network Stars, the Running Relay. Once again, let's join our host, Dick Van Dyke, and his co-host, the star of Knott's Landing, Joan Van Ark. Here we are at the starting line for my particular favorite, the running relay. Let me explain to you that there are six participants in this race. At least three of them have to be women. Now, the first two runners are each going to run 110 yards each. Then the middle man is going to run a full 220. Then the next two run 110 apiece. And the anchor man 
he runs full out another 220. That's a lot of adrenaline. That's a lot of adrenaline. Also, one more little detail. Unlike previous years, this will be a shuttle relay, which means the runners are running in a straight line. Now, that's going to make the passing of the baton really hard because they're running in opposite directions. And it's a very different strategy than it was at Pepperdine. Another difference uh, here versus Pepperdine is that this is uneven turf. Pepperdine was a track. This is grass, so those runners are going to have to watch out. And you know, some of them are wearing shoes, and some of them are running barefoot. That's a smart move. Zola Bud, move over. <laughs> right. Yes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> now, let's meet the team for the running relay. When NBC's leadoff man runs, pieces of Baja fall on the ocean. Bob the Smith. <laughs> running second from Silver Spoons, Aaron Gray. Running in 220-yard middle leg from Hill Street Blues, Ken Olin. Running fourth, Knight Riders, Patricia McPherson. And running fifth, former high school track star, Lisa Bonet. And running the anchor leg, Miami Vice's Philip Michael Thomas. Okay, Dick, let's take a look at the ABC team. First leg will be handled by Captain Tony Danza. <laughs> Running second, the newest addition to the cast of Dynasty, Emma Sam. <laughs> Running third, the man who made it happen in the swimming relay, Ted McGinley. <laughs> Running the fourth leg is Mary Cataret. <laughs> the fifth leg will be handled by Finder of Lost Love, Deborah Adair. And the anchorman of the ABC team, Dynasty's Jack Coleman, number one. To start things off, from CBS is the star of cover-up Jennifer O'Neill is facing the dubious distinction of running against two men. Running second, Dak Rambo. And doing double duty in the middle, Billy Moses. And if he runs anything like his brother Edwin, NBC and ABC could be in real trouble. Running fourth is Mary Fran. Mary's looking to make up for her titanic performance in the swimming relay. The fifth runner for CBS is Dallas' own Jenny Lee Harrison. And finishing up, Doug McKeon. Doug told me before the race that CBS has a little something to prove here. Who do you think is going to win? Pretty evenly matched race, I'd say. Uh, yes, except Jennifer O'Neill. I wouldn't want to be in this first leg, the only woman. See. Good start. Pretty well. Working hard there. Look at her go. Yeah, she's fast. Impressive. Tony and Bubba going neck and neck there. There's the handoff. Emma Sam takes it out, takes it out good and strong, and she's doing well. Very well. Zach Rambo is going to blow by them, there I think. goes there. Aaron Gray for NBC, looking good, too. And there goes Dak. Dak hands off to Billy Moses, who is a strong runner, and he goes out strong. Look at that stride. He pulls way ahead. Now watch for this turn. Watch the grass, because this is treacherous. He's got a good speed going, and there he goes around to the Whoa. A little problem there, but he doesn't lose much. Ken Olin running second with Ted McGinley. Ken Olin is closing that gap with Billy Moses, who is fighting for that lead. Billy keeps running strong, though, and hands off to Mary Fran. Mary Fran. Did so well in the pool, she's trying the same stroke here on the running field. Here comes Pat McPherson. Mary Cataret there in the center lane, trying to eat up the distance there. Patricia hands off to Lisa Bonet, who goes out strong. That little high school runner, barefoot as she is, is looking good. Strong runner, good form. Going like a little bullet. There goes Jenny Lee Harrison coming in for CBS. Fighting there with Deborah Adair. And handoff to Philip Michael Thomas, who goes out strong. There goes Doug McKeon. Look at that. Boom Boom Mancini can run. Philip Michael Thomas is running strong for NBC, though. Watch him on that turn. Not too bad. And here is Jack Coleman passing Doug McKee in for second. It's a fight for second, but a definite first place for NBC. Philip Michael Thomas coming over the line first. What NBC. a race. Yes. Second place, ABC, and third place, CBS with Doug McKee in. Good race. Dick with the anchorman of the winning team, Philip.
Philip Michael Thomas. Could I have a word? Yeah. Boy, you held off McKeon there at the end, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Did you think he was going to catch you? No way. <laughs> you were playing. No, he was He was right behind you. He was gaining, but he's a fast No way. Guy. He's fast. How do you feel about those dips out there? Were they, did they throw I you off? I tripped three times. It's yeah. tough running in those dips, isn't it's it? tough running in the dips. You have some fast yeah. ladies. Oh, yeah. We got a serious <laughs> thing. We got a camaraderie here happening with NBC. It's monstrous. Yeah, a lot of spirit. Yeah. Well, you were behind and you guys pulled it out. Yeah. Great running. <laughs> Lisa Bonet, the little firecracker for NBC. Who coached you? Was that the cause? No, I just, I ran on track, so it's at school. In high school? Yeah, in high school. Well, you are a little firecracker, you know that? What's your training food? I, I didn't eat anything, and whatever, I guess I did the right thing, so. I guess so, because you would have lost it, wouldn't you? <laughs> you did beautifully. You made up the difference for NBC. They took first place. We're proud of you. Thank you. The NBC squad has reason to be happy. They just tied ABC for first place. Here are the standings after the first two events. ABC, 175 points. NBC, 175 points. And CBS in last place with 100 points. Hopefully, CBS can put something together in the beach relay, or this could be a blowout. Next up, the beach relay. Vamos a la playa. Announcing America's lowest factory financing, 8.5% now at your Renault Jeep dealer. 8.5% financing on Jeep Cherokee, the triple award winner. 8.5% financing on luxurious Jeep Wagoneer. Plus, get 8.5% financing on every Renault, like Smooth Riding Alliance and Sporty Renault Encore. Also, get 550 Plus, America's best small car protection. Hurry, finance offer on Renault and Jeep ends soon. Five minutes? She's kidding! Introducing new roll sausage from Swift Premium Brown and Serve. The only roll sausage that's ready in just five minutes. Pre-cooked with sacks of meat and seasoned just right. Roll call. And the taste? Mmm. So make it five minutes to roll call with new roll sausage from Swift Premium Brown and Serve. The newest great taste without the weight. Available in roll or links. We're Beatrice. It's a long, long weekend. Here at last, three days to relax and enjoy yourself. And no matter what you have planned, Long's is what you need to help you make the most of your long weekend. It's a Long's long weekend. Stop in at Long's. You'll find just what you want at prices that'll show you why the best long weekends are Long's long weekends. You always find the very best at Long's. Furniture invites you to join us for a spectacular Star Spangled Memorial Weekend Sale packed with furniture values. If you're thinking of buying furniture, now is the time to shop BJ. Get gigantic savings of 20 to 66 percent, plus 6 percent financing for one full year. That's right, charge anything and pay only 6 percent financing. Outrageous store wide savings with 6 percent annual financing. Why shop anywhere else when at BJ we got it all? The $170,000 Polynesian Fantasy. You could be one of over 1,800 winners of tickets to the Polynesian Cultural Center and a free case of Coke, plus a chance at the grand prize of his and her new cars. Entry forms in Times newspaper ads, all-time supermarkets, and participating Nissan dealers. And now, here are today's winners in the $170,000 Polynesian Fantasy. Enter now and be a winner in the $170,000 Polynesian Fantasy. The Ritz Men's Store makes it happen. Something for everyone. Something new for you. Hot summer looks to cool off Hawaiian nights. It's all for you at the Ritz Men's Store. Break from tradition. Get wild. Dress up. Dress down. Fun, active fashions. It's all for you at the Ritz Men's Store. For the special occasion, blazers and suits. New looks. New styles to fit every mood. Every moment. There's something for everyone. The Ritz Men's Store. Ala Moana. Pearl Ridge. Fort Street Mall. What can a dollar forty-nine buy today? Well, something like this. Okay. What else? Or well, this? Isn't that the uh, the chicken supreme from Jack in the Box? You mean for a dollar forty-nine, I can get juicy white meat chicken? 
Two kinds of cheese with lettuce and tomato on a wheat bun? How do I get my hands on one? Walk this way. But hurry, this offer ends June 9th. The Chicken Supreme, just $1.49 now at Jack in the Box. Get into the act. Putting on the hits, Sunday at 6. the beach here to stop about to go into the beach relay at this point in the competition cbs is in deep trouble abc and nbc are tied at 175 apiece cbs has 100 they've got to do something they're behind me now talking strategy i'll try and pick up a little of what they're saying Okay, so the strategy Larry is Hagman. Let's talk about Larry Hagman. Let's get it. <laughs> Larry Hagman. He's not here today. Oh, I thought he yeah. was. No, no. Talk about for oil. That's right. He's still looking for Larry's, oil. Larry's he digging. Nothing Larry's to digging do for with oil. Our what are we doing here? Hi, Larry. Oh. We're going to boat race. The idea is to get around the Bowie guys, okay? Any way you can. Any way you can. It doesn't matter if you have the oars or not. Well, what, honey? You can't, you can't push the boat. You have to stay in the boat. You have to stay in the boat. This is correct. No, no paddling. Who's a strange arm with a hair? What? Who's that? Ladies and gentlemen, as you've just heard, there's a little lack of spirit on the CBS team. They're trying to joke their way out of it. I think we all heard Lorenzo say, any way you can. I'll just leave you to think about that for a moment. Now, I think that Dick has been over with the CBS team huddling to find out some of their strategy. Uh, Dick, did you find out anything from CBS? Huh? What, what'd you learn? Well, not but they're, they're strategy? talking strategy. Yeah. I think they better uh, talk Earl Weaver out of retirement, what they better do by this point. <laughs> What about this next event that we're going to Well, do? this is a new event. Uh -huh. It's called the Beach Relay. It's a six-lap race. Right. It must include two women. And it could best be described as Gidget meets the Beach Boys at summer camp, I think. Oh, please. Would you tell them, Joan, how the game goes? Certainly will. Easy as pie. Now, some of you might want to write this down because it's kind of complicated, and it is a new event. The first runner has got to carry the kayak down to the beach to the shoreline as fast as he can, and at the water's edge here, he hands it to his teammate who paddles around a buoy and back to shore. And it could be difficult today, Joan, because this surf has been increasing steadily all day long. Yeah, some gonna pretty good breakers there. there. Absolutely. And each team member, in turn, then has to take the kayak out and back, except for the anchorman who grabs that kayak and runs back to the finish line lickety-split. The, the, the strategy of this race is, is to try to look like a man. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you're a woman. Yeah, like a man. Yeah. Hey, we're doing okay out there. Hand to the water, fellas. We got a team member who's actually up in the kayak. Alone, I don't know. <laughs> and where she's going, I don't know. Captain Tony Danza's chosen to go with men in the water and women on the land. CBS desperately needing the win is going with a different strategy using Jenny Lee in the water and Dak as the anchor. NBC will be using four women in a row. I would have thought that Bubba Smith would be the anchor person because if there's any person who could get a job as an anchor, it's Bubba. Yes, I'm fine, darling. Of course, but I have a family. I cannot never do now. Okay, fine. <laughs> They're at the starting line. CBS is in lane one, NBC in the center lane, and ABC in the far lane. And they're off. They're running neck and neck right through that first handoff. Lorenzo Lamas is the first to hit the water, and off to sea he goes. Pat McPherson is struggling just a bit. These are very light boats, and they may have trouble with those waves. You know, in past years, Dick, this race has been held in a pool at Pepperdine University, and there's no doubt that these folks are in for a much tougher time. Jack Coleman seems to be getting in a little trouble out there. But Lorenzo Lamas reaches the buoy first, cheered on by his teammates on shore. Handled that turn very, very nicely. There's McPherson battling. Coleman stroke for stroke. But CBS is in the lead now. ABC in second, and NBC is third in the center. Anybody What's happening out there? Huh? Well, we're running a strong third right now, but we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up. Come on! Come on! Lorenzo Lamas comes sly home. What, was he safe or was he out? <laughs> That's Colonel Weaver. That's Jack Coleman in second. In comes Lorenzo. Being coached by his teammates, he dumps the water out of his kayak. As we start the third lap, ABC with Ted McGinley's taking the lead. And in goes Lisa Bonet for NBC. Here comes Jenny Lee Harrison trying to get CBS back in that race. Whoa. 
Whoops, it looks like maybe yes. Lisa Benet's, oops, <laughs> out of the boat. You learned lesson number one about kayak. You never take on a wave bigger than you are. <laughs> They're all bigger than she is. McGinley having no problems whatsoever. ABC seems to be building an insurmountable lead here. having problems and there goes Jenny Lee around the buoy. I wouldn't count CBS out yet. Well, McGinley certainly has given ABC the advantage as we reach the midpoint of this race. It looks like he hands off now to Michael Spown. And Jenny Lee Harrison heads for home. Doing great. Oh, she has, great, great. There she goes, moving on into shore. Lisa Benet valiantly trying to stay afloat. There she goes, good girl. <laughs> Jenny Lee reaches shore for CBS. Come on, girl, bring it on. Let's go. Moves on Come in. On, Come on, baby. All right, Doug, take it away, baby. Yeah. Heading off to Doug McKeon, who's off and running. He'll have to do some stroking to catch Michael. There is Lisa rounding that buoy finally. And there goes Doug McKeon, hits the water. Michael's found battling it out there at the buoys. But there's Michael over his shoulder. Sit back and let's see. If it comes, get out as soon as you can. See, now he's going to let water. Mike, get out and run! Get out and run! Overboard again for Lisa Benet of NBC. Keep trying, girl. <laughs> Don't believe it. Poor Lisa. Doug McKean for CBS rounds his buoy and is heading for home. Here comes Michael Spound, and he's handing off to Captain Tony Danza. Now, that's ABC's last rower going in. Danza going out very strong, looking good. And in comes Doug McKeon. Stroking evenly, looking very good. Beautiful. Out of the kayak and in for shore. Uh-oh. I think Tony Danza's in trouble. <laughs> Watch that wave, Tony, it's a doozy. <laughs> Captain always goes down with the ship. <laughs> but he's back in again. And he's out again. Oh, he's down to the count. <laughs> There's some guts and determination. Now it's Billy Moses, the last rower for CBS, taking the reins and heading out for the buoy. There goes Tony for another try. He's going to try and walk around it this time. <laughs> Captain Craig! I love it. It's a relaxing, man. I thought we were doing this. <laughs> Tony Danza, one last dance. It's unbelievable. Out for try number three, Tony Danza and Aaron Gray rounding the buoy for NBC and working away towards shore. And Billy Moses looks like he's going to ice the victory here for CBS moving into shore. Oh, that's, here comes Billy, who will hand off. Gray getting a free ride in there on that wave. Oh, to Dak Rambo. And that we have our winner, CBS, and I think that's in record time. Record time? Dick, this is the first time this race has ever been run. Details, details. There they are, CBS is victorious. Aaron Gray handing off the last rower, Ken Olin. Steady wins this race. Slave wins the Still working his way around the buoy. Just to give you an idea about how far ahead CBS was, NBC has two people left, and if Tony Danza continues to have trouble, the CBS team might be dressed for the fiesta by the time the other two teams finish. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. He goes Ken out and around the buoy. Look at Tony. Look at that. He is exhausted. We're going to do it! it in and Ken Olin circles the buoy for NBC. And Tony finishes in what could be called the world's slowest lap. Determination. Tony passes off to Pat Klaus. 
to finish in second place amidst the crowd's applause and approval there. Here comes Ken Olin. He hands off, I think, to Philip Michael Thomas. Right, and that makes NBC finish third. And in goes Philip Michael Thomas. And Dick is with the winning team. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's about time. Billy Moses is on the side. Earl Weaver came. Sure. Huh? You never lost a vote. Jennifer, Jenny, not even a person. We needed that one. We did okay for girls. We needed the win. And win they did to close the gap. At the end of three events, the score is ABC 250, NBC 225, and CBS right up there with 200. Joan just got a hold of Captain Tony Danza. I think, Tony, we might have, I know you have your own show, but you might have material here for a spin-off. Yeah. Row, 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 you both? Yeah, I know the, I know the lyrics. Uh, you want to hum a few bars? I said before that, that event started that uh, this was specifically designed to make us look like fools. And so I went out and made sure you guys succeeded. Uh, no, I, we're not I, doing... I, just, I think I get invited to these things to fail dramatically. You, you, know? you gave us such good stuff. We, ABC has another show here. That's what I'm saying. I'm, that's what I'm here for. It's your backup show. Anyway, but uh, I want you to know, I was finishing before. I didn't know that, that there was another NBC uh, show. I thought I had lost it, and so I was just going to finish. Sure, and come on in and take a sun bath out here. Just to finish. And then I saw uh, Ken Olin coming out, and I was... Oh, they're not going to be too mad at me, you know. And then I said, gee, we were that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you lapped him a couple times. Well, listen, you're still in first place. That's what counts, right? And, and that says something for the other two teams. Let's take another look at Tony Danza as he attempts to get over that first wave. Luckily for Tony, they don't do much kayaking down Columbus Avenue. Although he splits his time between Los Angeles and New York, he considers himself a New Yorker at heart. New York is such a great place. The difference between New York and L.A. is L.A. is a song that you dance to, and New York is a song that makes you dance. Around the streets of New York, a lot of people still identify Tony with his role on Taxi. Boxer, cab driver, Tony Banda. How's Louie? I love Louie, too. Taxi was the, uh, my first job. I was in a wonderland, and it never would end. And what was, you know, I never had to think about what was I going to do after that. And I was younger. And I was thrust into the Hollywood scene, and all of a sudden, girls were looking at me more than they used to, and uh, it was like really something. And then it was gone. And not only that, but my old man died. I didn't help. Um, he passed away right after Taxi, right before Taxi was canceled. And uh, a few other things went, you know, I had a couple of years that just seemed like things weren't the way they were. It was like, it was like somebody up there said, okay, now we're going to show you how it could be. <laughs> And so I saw. And so uh, now you have to learn by those things. You know, I mean, if you, if you go through all that stuff and nothing happens to you, if you don't go through it, it's like I used to be in the gym, so this old train of Chicky Ferrara. Now, he always used to tell me to keep my right hand up here, otherwise I was going to get hit with the left hook. Until that left hook landed, maybe two or three times, I didn't call that right hand up. So what you try to learn is it'd be nice if you could get it up before it landed. but. Seeing as it's landed, at least let's get the hand up now and learn from your mistakes. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was just looking for a bra. <laughs> I mean, for my daughter. And what size is she? Uh, I don't know, she takes a five and a half hockey skate. <laughs> On Who's the Boss, Tony's new series, he plays the father of a 12-year-old girl. In some ways, his role as a single parent parallels his life. Tony is a divorced father with two children. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's incredible because, you know, sometimes you think kids are so young that they don't understand. Well, boy, they understand so soon. They're so hip, so young. Really, unbelievable. Like, my son, first of all, is a, a good heart. I mean, like, when his mother wants to sleep a couple of hours and, and the baby's up already, Mark takes care of the baby. You know, he's on the floor with his carrying her around. He dresses her up. I mean, you know, he's really something, the baby. And so that there's a bond, a bond there that's been, uh, that's been you know, worked on and they, they they kids are real honest too you know you know they look at you and you know they love you or they don't love you. coming up next the city boy takes to the water again in the mexican fishing boat race i don't 
feel one ounce of guilt when I eat. I eat at Wendy's. Wendy's has a new light menu. Hundreds of lower calorie salads, with new fresh fruit, and pasta salad. Wendy's light menu even has a lower calorie multigrain bun. I eat all I want from Wendy's light menu. Now, do I look like I feel one ounce of guilt? Try Wendy's new light menu. Witness the emergence of a revolutionary automotive idea, Dodge Caravan. It will be widely imitated, but thanks to a five-year, 50,000-mile protection plan and front-wheel drive, it may never be equaled. Dodge Caravan, one vehicle that takes the place of an economy car, sporty car, station wagon, and van. Dodge Caravan is a transportation revolution. If you just ask for a light beer... Uh, give me a light. You never know what you'll get. A Bud Light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Hold this, will you? Because everything else is just a light. <laughs> Bud Light. The promise of bread at its best. Toasted, filled, sliced, and grilled. Earth Grains. Earth Grains. The promise of bread at its best. to explain our next exciting event is our host Dick Van Dyke and his co-host Joan Van Ark at the water's edge. Hola, llegó la hora de la guerra de las estrellas. El primer evento será la carrera de lanchas mexicanas de pesca. Promete ser una de las más difíciles y excitantes carreras de esta olimpiada. That's wonderful, Joan. Oh, thank you, Dick. Your thank Spanish you. is perfect. Yes, it is, actually. Yes, oh, thank I'm you. So oh, Good nothing. job. Absolutely nothing. Well, what uh, Joan was so eloquently stating in yes. Spanish, we're back here to Stapa, Mexico, mm -hmm. and you're about to see a battle of the network stars first. It's called the Mexican Fishing Boat Race. Promised to be probably one of the most difficult and exciting of the whole competition. This one is a tough one because of that, sir. Sure is. Well, Joan, we're approaching the midpoint also in the whole competition. Also, really, no team can afford to lose this. Not at all. And the standings right now put ABC in first place with 250 points. NBC is in second place with 225 points. And CBS is not too distant a third with 200 points. Okay. So, I tell you, I would ha actually have to give the advantage, though, to ABC. Why? Why do you say that? I say that because they have Ted McGinley of the Love Boat on board, and I think that's going to give them quite an edge. <laughs> Yeah. I don't believe that handing a shuffleboard disc out to the passengers quite qualifies them as seamen, you know. What do you mean? Well, I've got to hand it to NBC just based purely on their raw bubba power. Bubba's going to be on the boat, huh? <laughs> the boat. Okay. Well, do the rules say what they're fishing for? No. I, well, they're stars. I guess maybe they're fishing for compliments. Huh? Oh, okay. Stop that. <laughs> Here's oh. how the race works. Uh -huh. Each boat holds six people. Right. And two of them have to be women. Uh -huh. which wouldn't be bad if they get lost and land on a desert island. they got at least two women. They're right. Each one has to have a steersman, four rowers, and a bowman. Now, after the boats have rounded the boy and returned to the start-finish line, we have our winner. Well, we'll not only have our winner, Dick, we will have... Un día maravilloso aquí en Ixtapas y Guatanejo. Esperamos disfruten de tan emocionante competencia. Adios. That is remarkable. Oh, really, Dick? It's nothing. Piece of cake. <laughs> oh. Mexican stand-in. ABC will go with three men and one woman, Debbie Adair, as the rowers, leaving Ted McGinley to handle the steering. CBS will go with strength up the middle with Billy Moses, Lorenzo Lamas, Doug McKeon, and Dak Don't Call Me Back Rambo. And the NBC team will go with the four detectives, Philip Michael Thomas, Bubba Smith, Keel Martin, and Ken Olin, so at least we know they won't get stopped for speeding. Oh, isn't that sweet? Lucy Arnaz running out to wish her team a bon voyage. Uh, no, I don't think so, Dick. I'd say she missed the boat. You may be right. Jennifer O'Neill is waving her off. And that boat in the foreground there is our camera boat, catching okay, all the action. Okay. Off they go. CBS got off to a slow start. I wonder if they were all watching Lucy. And nope, I think that CBS finally figured out that the race is on. ABC jumps out to an early lead. Let's just hope that Captain Tony Danza can stay in the boat the whole time. NBC is in second. And it looks like a pretty tight race, but ABC is pulling out ahead. See, Dick, I told you they had an advantage. Ted McGinley from the Love Boat, see? Doing very well. Jennifer O'Neill is imploring CBS to make up for that slow start. 
<laughs> Can't tell you what she's saying, but from here it looks downright inspirational. NBC having their trouble. I think Bubba is rowing the wrong way. I don't know about this team in water sports. I don't either. They had a lot of trouble getting their boat in the water. And as the ships approach to midpoint, ABC is clearly in the lead with NBC and CBS in a dogfight for second. Look at ABC go. Look at McGinley steer that boat around that boy. That's the oh, love boat touch. He's got experience. Well, both he and Pat McPherson of NBC are avid sailors, and I'm sure that helps. Now the NBC team reaches the boys second, a slight lead on CBS. And there is Jennifer O'Neill of CBS begging. Row, row your boat. And there we see clearly ABC in the front running position and NBC and CBS vying for second. Bubba still doesn't seem to be able to get the hang of this. He's using that oar like a brake. ABC still has a commanding lead as they stroke gracefully toward the finish. CBS is fighting an incoming tide, plus the surf is tending to wash you towards shore. Well, Dick, I think what they're making up in coordination, they are losing in steering because of that surf. You're right. And ABC full steam ahead. It's their race and in record time. But wait, Dick, this is the first time for this event, too. Oh. CBS looking in good form, and there they go over the line for second place, and NBC is in third. ABC celebrates their win. And CBS favoring their second place finish. Well, NBC isn't sure who got second place. And Dick is both side with the ABC team. I think that uh, our girls are really coming up big. <laughs> Man, well, it was the best teamwork, obviously. Well, Ted, Ted, Ted knows the ocean, and that really helps, and he called a great race. Uh, what a great race, but... Uh, we had the least power, but we had the best synchronization. The most seamanship, huh? And here's Ted displaying his seamanship as ABC rounds the buoy without a hitch. At the midpoint of the competition, ABC out in front with 350 points. NBC and CBS are tied for second with 275 points apiece. Joan is with Lucy Arnez, who had trouble at the beginning of the race. In the heat and the height of Battle 18, we're getting down to the short strokes now, we're finding out that it's not all just fun and sun. All actors, like all people, like to win and to succeed and to contribute. And I'm with one such gutsy lady right here, Lucy Arnaz. Hey, hey, hey. Spirit. Spirit all the way. She wanted to contribute so much that you swam halfway out to the starting line of the Mexican boat race well, just to be a part of... What happened, Joan? Well, you see, I was supposed to be in that boat, and I was waiting for the race to start, but nobody announced the race, and I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I'm sitting in here waiting and the race goes on without me and so i decided to come out and see it and sure enough there were the boats out there and so i said please i want to be in that boat please it should have been me and, and i know that girl doesn't want to be in there i really because i didn't get to compete enough and they said no it is too late and then someone ran over to me and said it's okay they're gonna wait for you but you'd have to swim out to the boat i said i'll do it i threw off my sunglasses so i dove into the water yeah. and then i heard the gun go off Sometimes life can be pretty funny, but Lucy Arnaz, the daughter of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, is no stranger to comedy. She's been around it her whole life. And after starring on Broadway, Lucy's come home to roost. Situation comedy, I think, has gone full circle. You know, there was a time when it started out with family comedies, like I Love Lucy, like your show, and, and then it went into sort of the Mary Tyler Moore genre of ensemble. It was the working generation, and now it's come back around the Bill Cosby show and family ties, and, and shows that getting back to the values of of trying to raise a family as well as have a job, which is really the hardest part, right? You know, and that's that's important, I think. Do you ever, if, when you're doing a scene, feel that you're doing your parents or feel like that was, I did that like my dad or I did that like my mom? I have actually never said that out loud, Dick, but I have thought it many times. And I don't really shy away from that. I mean, I figure it's either genetic or it's sort of a, a learned thing without you knowing it. You're, you're listening and you're watching and I, don't, I, I appreciate everything I've learned from them but I do think that my style is different enough from my mother's that I'm not going to be compared to her all the time. I think I'll go with mostly country western. Lucy's latest okay. endeavor is the Lucy Arnaz Show. Jane, there's a call for you. Mr. Beverly says he's your neighbor. Yeah, thanks Sam. Line two. Right. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Mr. Beverly. No, it's all right. The show hasn't started yet. Well, <laughs> yes, 
His name is Jim Gordon. How did you know he spent the night? <laughs> well, thank you for your concern, Mr. Beverly, but... The roof. What's he doing on the roof? Well, I know he's been acting a little strange, but I... I'm on my way. Larry, cover for me. I'll explain later. You're on the air! Hi. On the Lucy Arnett Show, you play a pop psychologist. Do people start asking you questions now in the fan mail that you're getting? Well, not just so far. We've only been on a couple of weeks, but uh, I've already started to volunteer information. <laughs> I mean, I can fix any of your problems. What do you want to know? Hmm? I, I've learned a lot from doing this job. Have you patterned yourself after any of the pop psychologists on the air? Yes, I've tried to get shorter and more German. I want to be Ruth Westheimer. As we look down upon the Camino Real Hotel here in beautiful Mastaba, we'll be right back. The Bazaar. The Unique. The Unexpected. You'll find them all on Ripley's Believe It or Not, Sunday nights at 6.30 on KITV Channel 4. Starting this Sunday, celebrate Scan Design's store-wide home sale with Easy Living, a festival of savings on leather recliners, easy chairs, European sofas, and corner groups. Cozy Home Comfort saves you hundreds of dollars on platform beds and matching dressers in rich rosewood or teak. Dine in style with handcrafted dining tables, chairs, buffets, and hutches, all up to 50% off. All during the store-wide home sale starting Sunday at Scan Design, 800 South Veritania. Let me show you what the competition is giving you in their macadamia nut candy. First, sample A. Sample B. As you can see, there's hardly any nuts, which of course is the most expensive ingredient. Now here, with Minhuni Mac, you get what they say they're giving you. And that's individually hand-dipped quality in every box. For a gift, or even for yourself, don't settle for anything less than the best. And that's Minihuni Mac. Mmm. A street of sound, it is awesome, it's free. It's a lift, it's a wave, it's the way you should be. Here's the grand prize in the $170,000 Polynesian Fantasy. Isn't her new cars from Nissan? Brought to you by Coca-Cola, Time Supermarkets, and the Polynesian Cultural Center. They were told it was impossible, warned not to try. But three men believed it could be done. Because the people of Hawaii deserved a better chance. A new airline was born. Meet Pacific Air. A chance for all of us to see more of the state we live in. More of each other. Mid-Pacific. Competitive airfare was only the beginning. On June 21st, Mid-Pacific Air will once again lead the way. Success. Spectacular success. To celebrate, Volkswagen presents the Success Celebration. Your chance to get exciting deals on all the exciting 1985 Volkswagens. Thrill to the cars. I love Throb to the deals. May 17th through 28th, the Volkswagen Success Celebration, rated VW. There's no better time than now to buy a Volkswagen at your Hawaii VW dealers. We're with you, KITV with you. Channel 4, telecasting from the Ala Moana Americana, the hotel that cares about Kama Aina's. We've reached the midpoint, but before we get back to the battle, it's fiesta time in Estapa. Our stars took a well-deserved break from the competition. This is Battle of the Network Dancers. <laughs> if dancing was an event, Mary Fran would have brought it home for CBS. Tony Danza and Mary Cataret not needing any castanets for fun. It certainly was, Jenny Lee, and there sure was a lot of it. Ken Olin, not a detective for once. Lucy Arnez enjoying guacamole. And Keel Martin giving some more strategy pointers. The fiesta really provided a chance for a lot of these people to get to know one another, and competitors found themselves among friends. I happen to know that Mary made a friend. And 
Emma Sam's properly festive with a flower in her hair. It was a time to relax and forget about the rigors of competition. Michael Spound still convinced his team will win. Tony Danza seemed to be able to put off all the thoughts of competition with a little help from Mary Friend. A couple of dancers happy to be on land for a change. Tony and Mary won the first battle of the Network Stars Dance Contest. Their prize, a tour of Estapa. Together with its sister city of Zihuataneo, Estapa is fast becoming one of Mexico's most popular resorts. Nestled on the Pacific Ocean, Estapa offers a wide variety of recreational activities. Nearby Zihuataneo is a shopper's paradise where authentic Mexican handicrafts abound. Vacationers can enjoy golf and tennis set amidst breathtaking scenery. Or if it's water sports you crave, Estapa has all you can handle. Water skiing, sailing, and scuba diving are among the more sedate choices. Now, some people's idea of water sports is a seafood dinner. The waters off Estapa are noted for their superb fishing, and the restaurants throughout the resort offer excellent seafood. The area's fine hotels provide most of the nightlife, with the action centering around the hotel lounges and discos. So whether you're traveling with a loved one or just playing the dating game, Estapa Zihuatneo has just what you're looking for. <laughs> to signal the end of the fiesta, a brilliant display of fireworks lit up both the sky and the beautiful face of Aaron Gray. Erin began her modeling career at the age of 17. Possessing classic features and a winning smile, it's not hard to understand why. But it was her roles in television and feature films that have shown the world that Erin Gray is not just a pretty face. Do you speak any Spanish? The material, the material de barro. Yeah. Made out of terracotta. Yes, but is he a special kind of man? I mean, Deca. Deca. It's nice, I like it. How much? 10,000 In the last few years, I've become extremely comfortable with myself. I like myself. Almost free today. Almost free today. I love it. All right. Almost free. How free is free? Let's see. All the years that I was modern, I felt the need to create some sort of mask, some sort of... I had to pretend to be somebody else. I, for some reason, I didn't think I, I had enough to offer. Wherever that originated from, I don't know. I never thought I was pretty enough. I always thought I was fatter than the next girl. And in modeling, so much importance is played on looks. Your hair, your makeup, your weight, your skin texture. It's, it's too much. It becomes like this giant wart after a while. I don't know how to describe it. It's horrible. Uh, you, can, you have no perspective on yourself as a human being. The last few years have seen a more content, a more centered Erin Gray. For me, I think the real turning point came in finding what I love to do. Because in finding what I love to do, I find dignity and self-respect. And if I have that, I have so much to give someone else. But if I'm always trying to do for others and what I think they want, I'll never be on time. I'll always be all over the place. I'll never be happy, always suppressing my own desires or feelings about things. And, and, I, and it, it's not truthful. How can my husband and my son and my friends deal with me if they're not, they never know me? So I'd rather have them like me or dislike me for me, really me, than something else that I've created. Although her work on Silver Spoons proves her to be an accomplished comic actress, Erin feels more at home with her recent work on a dramatic film. It's like putting on an old shoe or an old sweater. And I felt myself soaring inside. For the first time, it wasn't, I wasn't saying, well, was it all right? I knew. It felt good. It was growing. I could feel it expanding inside. And I was getting high on my work. And I remember, like, the second day of working, I was coming home in the van, and I was like, i got to call somebody. i got to tell somebody. I'm glad I'm an actress. I'm really happy with my work. And it's only the beginning. We'll be right back for the resumption of hostilities. Coming up next, the mixed doubles tennis competition. Stay tuned.
Just when you thought your wash was clean. <gasps> Germs! Now your wash can be really clean. Introducing Lysol Laundry Sanitizer. So powerful it does what hot water can't. Work with your detergent to reduce household germs, even odor-causing germs. 99.9%. Lysol Laundry Sanitizer leaves your wash so white, bright, fresh-smelling, it's... Sanitize. Clean. New Lysol Laundry Sanitizer reduces germs 99.9%. Introducing the fuel-injected Honda Civic CRX SI. It's a rocket. <laughs> the toughest roach problems are where sprays can't reach. That way roaches live and breed. Boy, I ain't seen a spray yet kill around corners. But raid, crack and crevice roach foam, tracks roaches down and up and around corners. Its deadly foam fills cracks and crevices to kill hidden roaches dead. Raid roach foam kills hidden roaches dead. Hi, I'm Sylvia Chase of ABC News. Each week we bring you an exciting and probing news hour. 2020 covers stories like no one else. From headline-making interviews to civil rights issues. Join Hugh Downs, Barbara Walters, and me for 2020, Sunday at 5 on KITV. We're in touch, so you'll be in touch. We're back at the magnificent Camino Real Hotel in Estapa, Mexico, for the mixed doubles tennis competition. The courts are nestled in the hills alongside the hotel and provided a scenic background for what proved to be some surprising action. All rules of tennis apply. Each network supplied two mixed doubles pairs. Each pair competed in a round-robin format until each team had played two games. For example, in round one, ABC1 played CBS1, NBC1 played ABC2, and finally, CBS2 played NBC2. The winner of the event was the team that compiled the most total number of games won. So it's not whether you win or lose the set, but by how many games your team won. In case of a tie, a one-set playoff would determine the winner. In the tennis competition, the story was one of extremes. In round one, on court one, Ted McGinley and Mary Cataret for ABC squared off against Billy Moses and Jennifer O'Neill for CBS. Of the two teams, CBS was the more experienced. In fact, Mary Cataret had never played the game. In the end, the combined experience of Billy and Jennifer offset Ted McGinley's ferocious serve, and CBS won six games to two. The second round pitted Aaron Gray and Philip Michael Thomas for NBC against Michael Spound and Patricia Klaus for ABC. Like Mary Cataret, Philip Michael Thomas had never played tennis before. Aaron had to explain a few things to Philip before they could play, things like the rules and how to score. By the time it was over, Pat Klaus and Michael Spound wished she had left out the scoring part. Was a natural athlete and it came through time and time again proving that form can triumph over experience just as surely as NBC triumphed over ABC six games to four. The final set of the first round saw Nancy McKeon and Ken Olin outpoint Lorenzo Lamas and Lucy Arnez six games to two. It was an important set as the winner determined the leader after the first round of play. is written all over Lucy Arnaz's face. At the end of the first round, NBC was in the lead with 12 games to CBS's 8 and ABC's 6.
at the opening of the second round, Ted McGinley, a fine tennis player, ran himself ragged trying to compensate for Mary Cataret's lack of experience on the court. But in the end, the effort was worth it, as the ABC team eked out a victory over Aaron Gray and Philip Michael Thomas, six games to four. And it was a big win for McGinley Cataret as it kept ABC in the hunt. The second set saw two first round winners, Olin McKeon for NBC, against the team of O'Neill Moses for C. Big win for McGinley Cataret as it kept ABC in the hunt. The second set saw two first round winners, Olin McKeon for NBC, against the team of O'Neill Moses for CBS. I got it. I got it. After a hard fought match in which the lead changed hands several times, NBC emerged the winner 6 4. With the victory, they clinched, and I do mean clinched, the tournament. In the final set, Pat Klaus and Michael Spound crushed the CBS team of Lucy Arnaz and Lorenzo Lamas to put a lock on second place. So the final tally was NBC in first with 22 wins, ABC in second with 18, and CBS in third with 14. Okay, here's the team, NBC, that did it in the tennis round. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, the point standings are now... ABC 425, right, right? right? And you guys are 375, right, and exactly. CBS trailing at, at uh, 325. Right. Okay, well, uh, everybody played a great game, Ken. I noticed you were playing a, a very steady and even game. You yeah. weren't trying to kill anything, but just okay. get it back. My partner played great. Ah, my yeah, partner too. played great. We won, my we're man. the only team we won. Uh, we won both our my matches. Yeah. Very even, steady Aaron game. Aaron and, Aaron's and Aaron, great. Yeah, hot well, thank you very much. Tennis. But I had a spiritual partner with, uh, with Philip <laughs> Michael. I'll tell you, he's never played in his life and he i don't know he was a natural he just kept he says i'll just get in he said it looked like a ping a ping pong table just a little bit bigger he just <laughs> just, yeah and just a little bit bigger and he says, as long as i get it in that's all that matters where is he yeah, where, he's, where he's is over philip there michael. oh philip michael's over there Philip, Michael Thomas for all of Miami has got to be thrilled about you. You are NBC's secret weapon. How long have you been playing tennis? Uh, exactly two days. Two days? Two days. Who taught you? Uh, the NBC team. The NBC team. Uh, what were some of your secret weapons? I noticed you have these the little goodies here on your wrist. Actually, these are weights that I use for, like, uh, isometric tension exercises. You know, like that. Not for punching people? Not for punching people, no. But what it did is it, like, when I was playing the first day, I played two hours with these on. And then I took them off, and I realized how light the, the uh, uh, bat. No, that's the, 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 the mat, no, 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 the racket. The racket, racket. was. The now, racket speaking was. of racket, uh, I want you to show us some of that body language that you had going out there. Who's, who's your idol, by the way, your tennis idol? My idol of age. All right. Now, listen, you didn't get that body language from him. I want, I want you to show him some of that stuff, that hip action. Okay, well, what I was doing is I was like, oops, Go ahead. winding up and... and Leaping yeah, but wait a minute. You had a little book of this. Yeah, there you, you know, go. Okay. That was, was the that stuff it? that really threw him. Aaron? You know what I was doing is I was really, you know how the spider and the fly works? <laughs> no, tell me what. Okay, well, what happened? I was I was throwing a little honey out there because I noticed the ladies, when they would watch me do this. This is it. I was with them. I was with them. I was totally distracted. So I, I think that's a definite there. weapon. Yeah, definite. It well, it did well. You did well. It did work, and we're very proud Thank of it. Thank you. NBC winner. They are. All right. <laughs> No, tell me what. Okay, well, what happened? I was I was throwing a little honey out there because I noticed the ladies, when they would watch me do this. This is it. I was with them. I was with them. I was totally distracted. So I, I think that's a definite there. weapon. Yeah, definite. It well, it did well. You did well. It did work, and we're very proud Thank of you. Thank you. NBC winner. They are. All right. <laughs> now, here's another look at that Thomas touch that helped NBC to victory.
athlete by day, in prime time he's a cult hero. But when the moon comes out, Miami Vice's Philip Michael Thomas takes on another personality. service guarantee. You pay for a covered repair once, never again. If it ever has to be fixed again, the repairing dealer will fix it free, parts and labor. Get all the details on the current issues of these weekly magazines. Lifetime service guarantee, only at these signs. The incredible has happened. The impossible has become a reality. Coke actually tastes better than ever before. Yes, Coke. 
has a new taste. And I'm standing here with this ice-cold, thirst-quenching, deliciously satisfying Coca-Cola, and it actually tastes better. Now, you know me, I always loved Coke for years and years. I like this Coke better. The new taste of Coca-Cola, better than ever before. Now, more than ever, Coke is it. We are back at the Camino Real Hotel in Estapa, Mexico for the sixth event in the Battle of the Network Stars, Volleyball. In the volleyball competition, ABC faced CBS in the first game with the winner advancing to the finals and the loser playing NBC to determine the last finalist. All standard volleyball rules apply and of the six members on each team, at least three must be women. Games are played to seven points, but a team must win by two. ABC established itself as the favorite right off the bat. With experienced volleyball players like Ted McGinley, Pat Klaus, Michael Spound, and Jack Coleman, they figured to be a shoe in. They looked and played as if they were born on the beach. As the game got underway, it became apparent that all the predictions were true. A, B, C came out playing. And even though Jenny Lee thinks they choked, CBS never really had a chance. Ted McGinley never left the service line. A, B, C advanced to the final, 7-0. So that meant that ABC moved into the finals and CBS would face NBC in the next match. CBS would have one more chance to make the finals, but to do so, they had to get past a tough NBC team. The game was a war. CBS, over their first game jitters, returned ball after ball. The NBC front line, Bubba Smith, and the tough play of Ken Olin made sure that there were no cheap points. On the CBS side, Dougie McKeon and Lorenzo Lamas kept the ball alive. CBS forced the game into extended play. NBC proved to be too tough, winning the game 8-6 to six to advance to the finals against ABC. So it would be NBC versus ABC to determine our volleyball winner. Bubba comes up to the net and you block him, right? Bubba is totally mobile. Standing with Ted McGinley is one of the main reasons for ABC's success, Jack Coleman. Earlier, Dick had a chance to ask Jack if he felt his role in Dynasty might prevent him from getting other types of parts. No, not really. I mean, there are times when, when I'm a little, uh, little uncomfortable with what's going on, perhaps in terms of typecasting and worrying about that down the road, but I, I don't think it's a problem, and I've been assured by many people whose opinions I respect that it really isn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, you played a strangler beside your bisexual, and you seem like a normal guy how do you get such well actually room? actually i think i'm lucky in that respect because uh looking like such white bread and the boy next door it's kind of nice to get roles that are different and that are there's something interesting about them not just uh dull boring boy next door from patricia mcpherson's first serve you knew it was going to be a good one in each of the prior events each team felt the other was the team to beat the two teams are in stark contrast to each other, the Malibuites of ABC versus NBC, a team with a more urban character. Ken Olin, who, by the way, is playing with a broken finger, commented that he would feel more comfortable playing half-court basketball.
match progressed, it became obvious that NBC would be no pushover. The combination of Ken Olin to Bubba Smith proved to be too much in the early going. Finally, ABC called a timeout, and the teams got a chance to talk things over. Get the ball. Don't take spastic shots at it. Hit it up. We're failing. Just hit the ball nice and easy. It's gentle. They're not hitting tough shots. We're just getting spastic. We're just hang in there. Let's get a good set. And if you let me come, let me come up for a couple of spikes. Not get anything down. Yeah, I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna come in. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Filled with team spirit, ABC sets out to even the score. Their cheerleaders helped them to get perked up for that final push. Not to be outdone, Philip Michael Thomas got NBC's cheerleaders going in his own inimitable fashion. On the first service after the break, Jack Coleman tried to implement his strategy of rushing the net, but Philip Michael Thomas blows the ball by him for the game. What we have now after the volleyball tournament is a very, very close race now between ABC with 500 points and NBC with 475. 25 point spread. What we got left? is uh, the obstacle course and the tug of war. Bubba, how do you feel about the tug of war? Is that wrapped? Uh, we're going we gonna... <laughs> to... We want, we want them in the tug of war. Yeah, we, want we want them in the tug of war. <laughs> how about the obstacle course? I heard you say, Ken, you had to get away from the water. But as long as we stay away from the water, we're okay. Obstacle course, like running for a bus, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, part of that obstacle course is in the water, I understand. You have to go over the, over the wall in the water. I'm not doing the obstacle course. <laughs> I'm not doing it. We got uh, Lisa, who's a high school runner, and uh, Philip, Keel. Nancy or Pat, we're in good shape. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, there were more experienced volleyball players on the other side. I know yes. Ted McGinley and what was an experienced volleyball player. Yes, but you know, Ken came through really beautifully because we didn't have much of a strategy, and he had, he had played the game a lot, and he knew what he was doing. He set up, yes, he played, but he set up the shots and the, and the st strategy, and it worked. It paid off. It, it was just well, good going, Ken. So that's the way the standings are right now as we look forward to this hot runoff between ABC and NBC. And here are the standings after six events, ABC with 500, NBC 475, and it doesn't look good for CBS, they are dead last with 375. And we'll be back in a moment with the dreaded obstacle course. In the 1850s, real cookout experts knew a little secret. They cooked with mesquite wood for a fast, hot fire and real open-range flavor. Well, now there's a charcoal with real mesquite right in every baguette. New Royal Oak Plus. It puts more flavor in the meat. And New Royal Oak Plus lights like a prairie fire. So for Old West barbecue flavor, this is the one to buy. New Royal Oak Plus. Real mesquite puts mmm-mmm in the meat. Into every life, a little rain must fall. And when that happens, Ford Tempo's forward thinking really shines. It has front-wheel drive traction, precise handling, and a shape that actually helps Tempo hug the road. You might also like to think of Tempo as a nice, cozy place to come in out of the rain. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Very soon, some of you will notice a change in Doritos. Doritos, now with more nacho cheese flavor than ever. <laughs> Definitely. Hi, I'm Sylvia Chase of ABC News. Each week we bring you an exciting and probing news hour. 2020 covers stories like no one else, from headline-making interviews to civil rights issues. Join Hugh Downs, Barbara Walters, and me for 2020, Sunday at 5 on KITV. We're in touch, so you'll be in touch. As we head down the beach at the Camino Real Hotel, we are about ready for the dreaded obstacle course. 
Let's go to Joan Van Ark, who is with the third place CBS team, and see what their comeback strategy is. This is a resignation speech. <laughs> Standing at this point, you know where you are. We're dead. I, I think we're we know where we're not. We know we're, we're not. We know that. We're clear. Yes, where aren't you? Uh, yes. Well, we're uh, we're not really in the money, but it's not going to stop us from having fun. Right. That's what I want to know. You guys going to dog it? Have you got a strategy? Are you no, going to go out there? We're, we're going to we're going to look good as we're going out. So. <laughs> How about as you're coming back? What are you going to do? Coming back. Coming back, we're going to look strong. We're strong. coming back next year with a couple more action shows. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no CBS execs. <laughs> no more nighttime shows. Well, from yeah. the starting line of the obstacle board, CBS is still going to give it a good try. Yeah. So let's, yeah. go. Yeah. let's go. Yeah. The obstacle course competition is divided into heats. Each team sends four participants, two men and two women, into their respective heats. The two teams with the combined fastest times nominate one man and one woman to run in the finals. The team with the fastest combined time in those finals is declared the winner. Yeah, I did it in the Army. I had a, held a record for oh, the obstacle you did. course in the Air Force. I well, did. then you come with me, Dick. Let's just explain it. And you do it, and I'll explain what we have to do here in this event. Come on. Oh, you ask it. you want me to do it? I want you to do it now. Well, here's the starting line, okay. obviously. All right, come on as fast as you can over this starting line. Yeah. You what have happens? to hit these tire, this tire first. You must yeah. hit in the center of each tire. Keep going. Come. Yeah. One, two, three. three. There you go. I'm doing that. Each like tire. And if you miss players. one, you have to step back in it to get it. Oh, don't, uh, don't step back in it. No, no, no. All right, fine. All right. I did it. I did it. Go under this. Go under, under, under here. fast as you can. Okay. Go, go, go. Good for you. All right. You can crawl or roll, and this doesn't matter now. Come on I down here I think I caught a sand dab. No, never mind the sand dab. I'll take care of that. You've gone over okay, the wall now, you and do? you must touch two ropes. Two Maybe ropes. two ropes. Yeah, one, two rungs. And how you get over the bottom. Ah, good for you. It doesn't matter. Come on around here now. Come on. Here you go. Fast. You're losing time. Now, this is the slalom. You must go to the outside first. Like skiing, Outside, right? that's right. Around. Well, outside first to has out. to be. That's right. It has to be outside first. You lose points. All right, now the hurdles. You have right. to attempt them. Oh, if you right. knock them over, it doesn't count. Right. Keep going. Oh, you're oh, going beautifully. Now to the finish line. And, and the finish line. There you are. Piece of cake. Do you know I just walked that and I'm exhausted? The first race pits Emma Sands for ABC against Patricia McPherson of NBC. Patricia, the lankier of the two, should have the most speed, but Emma should have the advantage in the crawl through. even through the tires. McPherson rolled under the crawl through. Now that's legal. She is the first one to the wall. A oh, little trouble there. Whoop, Pat McPherson went on the wrong side of the slalom. That will be a penalty for her. Over the hurdles. And Emma, a slight stumble there at the finish line. Let's take a look at the times. Patricia McPherson had a three-second penalty for starting the slalom pose on the wrong side, but she was still fast enough to beat Emma Sam's 24.92 seconds to 25.27. Now let's take a look at what happened to Emma. She had a lot of trouble getting under that crawl through. She literally crawled through that crawl through and it cost her the race. Here we are for heat number two in the obstacle course. It is Mary versus Mary, right? Yes, How do you feel? yes. Mary C. Pretty good, pretty good. Mary F? I feel pretty good. I got a good captain. My team's behind me. Good girl. I predict that Mary is going to win. Okay, so let's find out. Get out of here. Get here. <laughs> They're about to start. Mary's at the starting line. And look at the concentration on Mary Fran's face. They're off. Cataret seems to be handling the tires better. Oh, Cataret just got caught in the crawl through. Well, I think she hit her head, but Mary Fran is scrambling through. Oh, Mary Cataret hits the wall first. Mary Fran trying valiantly. They're about even now at the wall, and around they go into the slalom. Just Cataret over the. Oh, she tripped over the hurdle, and she's taking time to put it back. She's Isn't that something? Really neat. Mary Cataret built up such a lead in the slalom, she had time to replace that hurdle and still win. At the times, Mary Fran, 30 seconds, including a three-second penalty for going inside the slalom poles. Mary Cataret, 25.48, no penalty for the hurdles. And you can see the trouble Cataret had earlier when she hit her head ah, on the top of that crawl through. Ooh, I bet that smarts. I like a person who tidies up after themselves. A strange race for Mary, but a successful one. 
now for heat number three, and I've got two dynamite runners here. Lisa, how do you feel? I'm so nervous. <laughs> so nervous, huh? Well, get the Cosby here to help you. How about you, Jenny Lee? Well, my legs are wobbly, but we're going to have a go for it, you know? It's only for fun, right? Right? Right. <laughs> right. All right. The girls are ready to go, so take it away. Let's see. Hey. They are at the starting line. through the tires and even through the crawl through lisa bonnet is first of the wall i think being shorter helps on the wall you seem to get better leverage through the slalom oh lisa misses that second hurdle yeah but that's okay according to the rules here are the times. Well, that was quite a race and no penalties. Lisa Bonet just beats Jenny Lee Harrison by seven tenths of a second. Okay, that takes care of the women. Joan Van Ark is on the beach with Tony Danza and Philip Michael Thomas, the first runners in the men's division. There you see the rest of the men who will be running the obstacle course. Okay, we've seen what the gals can do. Now we're getting down. We've got some guys here. Tony, how do you feel? Well, uh, I feel pretty good. We better hurry up, though. The water's coming. Water. I know you, there are no kayaks no in this kayak. one. No kayaks here. Shape. All right, Phil, Mike, how do you feel? Very relaxed. You going to do a little of that boogaloo action? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> None of that. Don't try to psych me with that relaxed stuff. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are ready, too, so let's just get on with it. All right, go to the starting line, guys. The ABC cheerleaders lending strong support to their captain, Tony Danza who is at the starting line. They're ready to go. Take your mark! Get set! They're off. Yeah. Michael Thomas goes through those tires faster and through that crawl through with great energy. And he's onto the wall first. Tony's a close second. Thomas only hit one rung of the wall. That's a penalty. He stumbles. And over the hurdles. And Tony dies. <laughs> That's a close one. <laughs> well, here are the times. Thomas was assessed a three-second penalty for failing to touch two rungs on the wall. Two blondies this time, Billy Moses, Jack Coleman. What's your strength in this race, Bill? What's my strength yeah. in this race? Yeah. It's going to be a very long ride home if I don't win, <laughs> let me tell you. Going home together on the plane. <laughs> oh, so I'll hear about it the rest of the night. So. Hey, okay, Jack. Okay. What about you? I just think I have right on my side, so I... Right on your side? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, we're going to find out. Let's see who's got what on their side. Go to the starting spot. Pat Klaus anxiously looking to her teammate Jack Coleman and hoping for a win. Two fine athletes, Billy Moses and Jack Coleman. At the shot, they're off like a shot. Through the tires, under the crawl through evenly. Billy Moses heads for the wall first. He's up and over and around. A little trouble for Coleman there. But they're going through the slalom with Billy slightly ahead, over the hurdles, and over the finish line for Billy Moses and a CBS victory. <laughs> oh, but they have some time. Look at those times. Billy Moses, 15.59. Jack Coleman, 16.64. I'm impressed. Keel and Doug, okay. Now, you both tried the course, right? Yeah. What, what, what do you think is your strongest point here on this course? Surviving it. Surviving the course is your strongest point? Uh, actually, uh, it, it's actually just slow and steady and keeping my wits about me, what wits I have left, and I'm going to give it a good shot. Okay, Doug, what about you? Uh, well, as far as I, I think the tires are actually the, the hardest part, but uh, I, I agree with, with Martin. you got to... Mr. Martin, you, you keep uh, your wits about Slow and steady. Well, then we better slow and steady, move on. Our, okay, they're friends. Now let's go to it, all right? And Doug said he thought the tires were the toughest part. Well, we'll find out. Keel with great concentration. About to start. Off they go. Well, those tires are no problem for Doug. And no, under the ball, yes, indeed. He is serious about this over the wall oh, oh, a little bit of trouble there in and out of the slalom for doug over the hurdles it's an easy win for cbs i think he might have pulled a muscle there doug mckeon takes it with a 16.65 not quite as fast as teammate billy moses but more than fast enough to get the job done that's the end of the preliminary heats, and based upon the combined best times, it will be an NBC-CBS final. And we'll be back to see the obstacle course finals after a brief word.
Turbo Z. It is an American revolution. Nance, I'm gonna run the dishwasher. Not full. Nancy Way believes never run a dishwasher till it's full. Another bowl. Three more plates. Not full. The perfect way to prove new lemon scent sunlight out cleans the leading brand on tough, starchy food. Four bowls and a platter. Now it's full. After sitting all day, they really need new sunlight. In test against the leading brand on tough, starchy food, sunlight cleaned better. Nice. Now you can empty it. New lemon sunlight really stands up to dishes that sit. KITV in the 60s, known then as KHVH, was the only station in the islands to use a news helicopter. Times may change, yet some things remain the same. Now Sky Ranger 4 brings news from the remotest places home to you on KITV 4 News. Pepsi will put one lucky person on Easy Street, and it could be you. Harrison, the commercial television premiere of The Seduction. back for the obstacle course finals representing cbs jenny lee harrison and billy moses for nbc lisa bonet and philip michael thomas it promises to be a good one the winning team will be the pair with the best combined time so it is important to run well even if you're behind been here before is this deja vu or what what's going on Can i tell a story when i first came here to battle the network stars i said from the beginning i'll do everything but the obstacle course but the obstacle course now not only did i have to do it once i have to do it twice against little this Lisa, one who Lisa. creamed me last no but come on cbs you pulled it out now what do you think Lisa? any any different thoughts about this one oh, i didn't beat her by that much so it's going to be a close race again i don't know okay so we're looking for a close race let's get to it go girls that's lucy arnaz three-month-old baby watching the race. It's little Kate, who's probably a junior cheerleader for CBS, and Jenny Lee Harrison. Ready to start. And they're off. Lisa hits those tires a little sooner, and they're about even under the crawl through. Oh, oh, but Jenny Lee has hit some water there that may cost her. Oh, it does. Her leg went right through the rung there, and it's going to cost her valuable time. Oh, but look at the lead she has. Lisa has, oh, yes. Oh, she ran right through those hurdles. She didn't attempt them. That should be a penalty. But Jenny Lee, valiant to the end, goes over the finish line. Jenny Lee's time, 23.75, but Lisa Bonet, despite a three-second penalty for not attempting the hurdles, still manages to give NBC a half-a-second lead. Another look at the wall, and you see there that Jenny Lee's leg went right through the rung, and that cost her a lot of time. Now, you can see here, Lisa didn't even attempt the hurdle this time. She had little trouble with them in the first place, but that penalty was justified. Lisa Bonet, winner of the women's final. Like all runners, Lisa likes to share a good running story. I was just, I was with my cousin, Jason, and we were running in, on the beach, and I saw Keel, and I, I said, this guy looks really familiar. And at the time, Hill Street Blues was my favorite show. So I went chasing after him, and, you know, I said, you got, do you mind if we run with you? He said, no problem, come along. And he was, we were talking, and he asked me what I wanted to be, and I said, I was going to be an actress, or I wanted to be an actress. And, I don't know, it's just, so neat being here with him a year and a half later. I just never thought this would happen. So. Does he remember that? Yeah, movie? yeah. He, it's so neat to talk to him about it. So we, we, ran, we went out running to, this morning. We're having a good time. Lisa and Keel, friends, now teammates. Yeah! Okay, boys and girls, fasten your safety belts. We have a real contest here. Do you know, Billy, that uh, NBC is leading by .53? That's all you have to better his time? That's all you have to do? .53? Well, uh, we'll see, ABC's rooting for me, so I should, uh, it should be pretty good. We'll find out. I think the producers are probably laughing on both shows since we're on opposite each other. Yes, that's true. Any thoughts here? Oh, I'm just relaxed. You're just ready to go, huh? Enjoying everything. Okay, yeah. wipe the sand off you and let's go to the starting point. <laughs> A little bit of sand. Let's take it away. This is the race that will determine the winner of the obstacle course. They both look ready. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a close one. Wrong athletes, off they go. Even, even through the tires. Oh, Michael Thomas, a little, whoa, a little hesitation under the crawl through. Billy Moses is over that wall like a bullet. Oh, Thomas gets him to get over the wall. Into the slalom goes Billy, and over those hurdles, and he's easily won. <laughs> there it is, CBS and Billy Moses. A tired and slightly embarrassed Philip Michael Thomas heads for the sidelines. And here are the times. Well, Billy Moses beat his old time of 1559 with a 1534. Philip Michael Thomas ran a 20.27. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> well, CBS wins the last event of the day for them. The standing after seven events, ABC with 550, tied with NBC for 550, and a final for CBS of 475. But it's on to the tug of war now, the final and the ultimate showdown between ABC and NBC. Hey, give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. A Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Oh, kind of light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Monty Brewster has a problem. You have 30 days in which to spend 30 million bucks. If you can do it, you get 300. But if you fail, it diddly. How would you like to be my personal driver for the next 30 days at $5,000 a week? What a country. America love it. To use it. I just bought a nice bird. Or lose it. We're going to have a lot of fun with this kind of money. <laughs> Brewster's Million. Rated PG. Now at select theaters. Check newspapers for locations and showtimes. I'm Jim Duffy on American Television and you. Our commitment to public service is more than just words. We put it on the air, like announcements to halt drunk driving, or television dramas about child abuse, missing children, teenage suicide. Among our responsibilities is heightening an awareness of important issues. Together, we can open some eyes, even save some lives. It's a powerful combination, American Television and you. Well, this is it, Ken. Bubba psyched. Bubba is very... Tony, come here. Did you know that Bubba was psyched? Bubba wants to win bad. Bubba really wants to win bad. We're renaming him Tugga. <laughs> Tugga Bubba. I hope they don't put him in the front. I gotta look right into his eyes. Man, he's ugly. I mean, he's a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. I don't know, guys. I think we're gonna be underwater in this tug of war. <laughs> Who's gonna be where? I don't know for sure yet. We have to see what they do. I, I, I got a feeling we're going to... Uh... Ready to lose? <laughs> Put it bluntly. I don't think that I should be anchored down in the back. Because, see, he's not doing no pulling. He's not doing any pulling. That's the best thing I'm doing is... Put the too. lightest person in the back. Put... No, but listen, Pat. Pat. No, but that, that's not the point. The point is that we can't, we don't want to get into an endless, I mean, he's our, by far our strongest person. He's pulling oh, for two God, men yeah, here, okay? Yeah. He's pulling for two men. He does not have that leverage in the back. He has got to be closer to the front. So, Philip, I think, should be in the front, okay? Who's our strongest woman? Who's the strongest woman, you think? Strongest woman. Um, I'm pretty strong. All right. um, okay. I think we should go, okay. I think we should go, I think Nancy should go second. I think... I think we should, what do you, either Bob a third or Bob a fourth? I think Bob should be sure? third. I think we got to take a risk here. We're taking a risk here. We're not, we're, we're short of man. The man yeah. should be in the back, the back, though, definitely. No, that the point is what Bob was saying is the man, you, you want a strong man in the back to anchor it when you have two very strong men up front. But we're, we're, we're at a real disadvantage that way. So, we have to get his strength up front. So you're thinking if we put him second to third. last, no, I think or third, be third in the yeah. middle? I think we got to take a risk. we got to use his, these two strengths I have, have to be combined. One thing I'd like to the intimidation factor of Bubba up front on the other team. And that's all. Excuse me. I think that's that too. I, thought about. I think I maybe know. Bubba should be up front. So the stage is not quite set. NBC unsure about where to put Bubba. The rules are simple. 800 pounds limit, five people per team, at least two women. The winners go home with $20,000. The losers, $12,500. In Mexico, the metric system is used. NBC's weight, 365.5 kilos, or 799 pounds. ABC's total weight? 60 and a half. 60 and a half. 775 pounds. So the key here is that to include Bubba, NBC is going with three women. I want to get one comment from every member of the team before we start and before the tide comes in. Tony? Bubba. <laughs> Jack, kill Bubba. <laughs> Gang, you, come over here. 
Can I have one word from you, Deborah? Yes, you can, Mr. Van Dyke. What would you like to say about this last All the Marbles Tug of War? Win. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Pat. We are going to beat the blank out of that team. You're tied 550, yeah. and you're 24 pounds under. That's okay. 24 pounds less than their team. Okay. You better get that. Hi, Dick. Anchorman. Yes, sir. What do you have to say, Mr. Holt? I have to say that I must be the lightest anchor man ever in this competition, Dick. You're the biggest guy on this team. Yeah, yeah. Just You're not thinking about Bubba down there on the other end, are you? No. <laughs> okay. no not at all. You I'm going to throw it down to Joan now. I'm worried about it. Okay, we're at the water's edge right now, ready to tug. Thank you, Dick. And we got one comment going. Is this mud wrestling or is this tugging? Any comment? <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, God, my stomach's going crazy. <laughs> yeah, Bubba, what do you say? We'll get it. We'll get them. Okay, how about you? We're ready. Ready. They are off, and I think Joan Van Ark nearly became a part of the NBC team. I nearly did, and it shocked me to death. But there's no turning back now. It is such a shock when that gun goes off, and you try to pull with all your might. And already, instantly, your hands start to hurt, and it, you're being yanked around. Is that initial jolt important? It is very important, but the trouble is it seems endless, immediately endless. Because you are pulling with all your heart and all your soul. And you know how much it means because this is the big one. We're going for the gold and Bubba's pulling and Pat is pulling. NBC has a slight advantage with little Lisa Bonet as anchor woman. Oh, and he's sinking. Look, there is no traction at all because of the water here right on the beach. But they are gaining a few inches and they are pulling. Because the important thing is a concerted effort. Very little foothold. Very little. Pat is determined. Deborah Adair pulling, and Jack Coleman, they're all pulling with all their heart. About a foot, about a foot on the NBC side. And he goes concentration, meditation. The sustained effort of that kind. It's so frustrating when that rope slips through your fingers and you're pulling as hard as you can. Tony Danza knows that feeling right now, so does all of the ABC. Michael's found losing some ground as the anchor back there. And he's still pulling and determined. Strength in his body. It's holding a foot on the NBC side. Neil and Aaron Gray trying to chant a cadence there for NBC. Jack Coleman looks like he's weakening. And they're pulling. Oh, is he and lost a lot of he ground. He lost there. and it's slipping. You think that that's and it's over. over. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> complete meditative breath and I'll tell you I'm so glad to finish on top as Deborah Dare Jack Coleman and the rest of the ABC team completely spent console each other Tony Danza has one last thing to say Bubba dug in they got a tough team NBC I hate to say this but I said it last time I lost in the tug of war so I might as well say it again they got a great team and they deserve to win uh, it's tough. I mean, and we tried, and all the girls tried, and the guys tried, so we did our best. It was a hell of a pull. My arms are numb. And we'll be back. You ever seen a spoon that large? No, not, not since breakfast. He's got lots of names. My name is Igor Stravinsky. Hi there, I'm uh, Harry S. Truman. I'm uh, Don Corleone. Lots of charm. Can I borrow your towel for a sec? My car just hit a water buffalo. And lots of nerve. Play back and enjoy. What in the heck is the matter with you? Chevy Chase is Fletch. Are you serious? Rated PG. Starts Friday, May 31st at select theaters. You're not always neat and tidy. 
How perfect can you be? Someone no one can copy. You sure look good to me. Don't ever change a thing. After all that we've been through, you're just like me, Big Mac. There's no one quite like you. Big Mac. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Get into the act. Putting on the hits, Sunday at 6. Well, that is it for the 18th Battle of the Network Big Stars. 18 from Mexico. It's the first us. one from Mexico. Yes, Monday. it is. And what, the water washes over our feet, wakes us up. This is very refreshing. Fun. Really, ABC, although it looked like they were going to go, all the way at midpoint, leave everybody behind. Yeah, run away. Stuck in there. They absolutely did. There were a couple of close What's moments with the ties, but it's been really fun. Right. But Bubba Power, one out in the end. There was a lot it? of Bubbaing around here, <laughs> and he finally was the deciding factor. Bubba on the beach does very well. <laughs> and you on the beach, my friend, do very well. You've done a beautiful you. job. Let's team up and do it again next year. That was fun. Okay. So Adios. goodbye for Mass Stoppa. Yeah. Like a champ. Like boy. a champ. Like a. <laughs> I've got swimming <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 